Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and in this video I'll be going over and walking you through my Central Florida Zone 9 garden. Now this video was taken about three and a half to four weeks ago. So if you're comparing your garden to the brutally uh, damaged gardens that I have right now and I'm sure you are experiencing, I just wanted you to, to understand that this was taken a while back ago before this brutal heat has set in. Um, we're definitely dealing with a lot of bug damage, um, a lot of overwatered plants, and just plants that cannot handle the heat right now. So I'll be giving you an update here soon on our um, July garden. If you haven't already checked out my what to plant month to month series, I go over what you can plant each month to ensure you have some kind of crop growing throughout the year. Um, right now is a time to definitely take a break from gardening if you can. The heat is absolutely miserable right now. And uh, I like to start a lot of my seeds for my fall garden in August and September. So if you wanna fast forward and start dreaming about what you can plant this fall, I have um, all kinds of videos that you can look at and uh, start planning your fall garden. So you guys stay cool and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So today is June 22nd. It's been about four weeks since my last video. We just returned from vacation about a week and a half ago and we've been playing catch up in the garden, the yard property. So bear with me as we walk through here. This is our queen's wreath, and it is shooting some flowers throughout. This is one of my favorite uh, tr flowering trees that we have here. It's actually a vine. It's still tilting from the hurricane. We really need to pull it back and stake it off to get it back where it was. Over here we have our Vago garden beds. And I am an affiliate with them, so if you are interested in looking into those, I've been using them for over a year now, and I really enjoy them. They're holding up well. They've got a 20-year warranty, so you can actually find my affiliate link in the description below. Um, over here, I've got some uh, curly kale. Oh, look. And we just have a bumblebee on my Mexican heather. And I have another curly kale over here. I wanted to keep this cabbage here. In my last video, I sh showed you that it's kind of late to, to plant cabbage, but I had some extra starts and figured, you know what? This is a shady area. I wanted to just see um, how it would do. So I actually just harvested it today. We're just gonna take the, the ugly leaves off of it and salvage what we can from it. I also have a uh, red cabbage here. We have some parsley over here. We have our blanket flower over here. Now this is actually a pepper plant that I overwintered from last season. So this plant is about, mm, about a year and a half old. And what overwintering is, is you cut it back and let it regrow. And um, I, what I've found in the past couple years that I've done this, they, anytime I overwinter a pepper, they seem to struggle when our heat. So I don't think I'm going to overwinter my peppers again. Um, that's just my experience, but if you guys have some tips for me of overwintering um, peppers in Central Florida, let me know. But honestly, my experience hasn't been so well. If you, I'll show you here in a little bit of the pepper plants I have that I started this season are doing much better at producing better. So I have my two plus year old kale plant. This is dinosaur kale. That's kind of growing into a tree over here. This whole garden area is really pretty much shady most of the day. It gets early sun. It probably gets four uh, or five hours of sun max. This is a ginger plant. I actually just bought a ginger root at the store just to see if I could grow ginger and how it would work from just a ginger root at the store. And here it is. So I'm really excited to see whenever we harvest. I'll definitely clue you guys in on what that will look like. Um, I have started a video on how to grow turmeric. Um, I just haven't posted it yet, but when I do, you guys will be the first to see it. Um, this is turmeric that I saved from my last plant roots from last year. And so far it's doing beautifully. Um, so I can't wait to show you that. 
I have a penta here and I've got all kinds of herbs. I always skip this section, but it's looking really rough. Um, this is where I have my basil. I really need to just cut some of this back and get these weeds out of here. Um, and some mint. My husband threw this or pulled this out of a um, garbage, like a dump. He did dumpster dive this up and spray painted it white. And I just put little succulents in it. So that's actually been really nice. Over here, I have butterfly pea vine. And this has been really fun. The girls and I have been harvesting flowers from this to make tea. And I promise I actually have everything laid out on the counter that I will show you how fun and neat this tea is to make if you grow this plant. So um, I'll be having that video out soon. Over here is our green stock garden. And I gave this a trim back in the last video. And I'm so glad I did because everything's coming back so nicely. I added a few uh, flowers into this and some um, summer or southern peas. I think I got some black eyes and some pink eyes in here. So I'm really excited to see how those are going to do in the green stock garden because I have not grown them in here. Um, I did recently plant or replanted some new tomato plants. It's really late to be putting tomato plants in your garden, but I really just wanted to see how well these would do at a second planting. And so, um, so far we are getting flowers still and we're getting fruit. I have a lot of fruit on my other green stock garden. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, I did put some support systems on here from green stock because these beans will get tall and I'll want them to lean on something. I do have a pepper plant in here, so at least they won't be breaking and falling over. Super easy uh, support system. And I'm really excited to show you guys their new watering system. So this is actually just a little spout that goes into my existing irrigation line, or you can hook it up to a hose with a timer. And you have a little valve here that you can um, kind of gauge on how much water you want. Right now I'm just doing three minutes and it will fill my reservoir and that is plenty of water to get in and water this perfectly. So when we go on vacation, I don't have to worry about my gardens because they are on an automatic timer. So this is a huge game changer for green stock. I absolutely love their product. I've been using their product for over two years. I have three set up. I just received another one for Mother's Day that I have yet to plant. And I have two more in their new Glacier Blue, which I'm super excited. Um, we're most likely going to put those um, with herbs by our door on a spinner. I'm excited about this because I don't have any spinners yet. And um, we'll be putting one on our front patio with some succulents and one on our back patio. So it'll just be a nice color of pop or pop of color. And um, I'll show you guys what that glacier blue looks like. So over here in this garden bed, we have some curly kale in the front. I have one dahlia. And I have some collard greens here. The sun is definitely getting to them and baking them. I hope that these guys make it all the way through the summer because it'll be really fun to see these growing as trees next year. And I have some blue dazzling kale here. And over here, I just recently pulled up my tomato plants. Again, it's at the end of season. We're not gonna be getting any flowers because it's just so hot in the evening, through the night and through the day. With all the rain we've had, they're getting sick. And thankfully, these tomatoes are still producing over here. We have our little succulent stand over here. So over here is my first herb garden ever. This is actually my ancient rosemary. Um, I've been, any rosemary you see in my garden has been propagated from, from this rosemary. Our children love using it in teas and in um, meals. We throw it in with some olive oil and garlic and they just love coming out here and cutting it and putting it in our dishes. 
and I love just teaching them how to use it and it's so fun to watch all their friends come over anytime we make sweet tea they're all cutting little um, ends off of it and putting it in their cups and then they're sharing it with their friends and their friends are going to tell their parents it's just an awesome thing for our kids to also share with their friends so actually all these herbs I'm gonna be pulling them up and finding a way to put them in my new glacier blue uh, green stock here and I can't wait to put it here because I just think it's gonna look so nice I love teal it's my favorite color and as you can see we have pops of teal out here with our cushions and if you were to go through my house you would see the same so over here is our other green stock garden and look at the flowers from my rosemary this is so fun it's absolutely beautiful and this has been propagated doing so well we have some oregano here I've got some curly kale popping through here we have our peppers here at the bottom we have all kinds of different peppers um, I really need to fertilize them in this heat see how their leaves are just kind of wilting it's so hot right now um, but we're still getting peppers and harvesting them right here and here's a little mini tomato plant it's doing good and I want to show you check out my tomatoes they're still producing here through summer I just love how the dwarf this is actually dwarf curly kale looks in the green stock gardens um, I actually plan on planting some sweet potatoes in my other green stock garden because a lot of people have, have had really good success with them and we love sweet potatoes and we love growing them and our kids love harvesting them so that will be super fun that's kind of the plan with with these over this one over here I have a um, eggplant over here uh, when we returned from vacation we had a few hornworms in the garden and one of them was on this eggplant it was beautiful it was huge <laughs> and literally in several days it took off lots of leaves and the tops but it's bouncing back we just removed it and um, we sprayed the whole garden and we actually gave it to our chickens and they loved it so this is doing well over here I also want to let you guys know that whenever you are uh, starting your green stock garden you want to make sure it's level and you put it on a slab or on concrete and make sure wherever you're putting it there are actually little um, slabs underneath here my husband came out with me and kind of graded the ground and helped level these I actually leveled this other one by myself and that is the block ready to go um, and get ready for this green stock over here is my strawberry tower and as you can see look at that they are already dropping little plants and what you could do is you could remove this plant put it in a pot and let it grow another plant or you can just let it be and and drape down um, a couple of my plants have died through the summer um, I've always had trouble keeping strawberries healthy through the summer uh, they are definitely in their prime through January February March sometimes April and it's just kind of at its end um, so I will definitely be taking some of these out and letting them uh, grow more plants to replace some of the plants that have died I did want to let you know if you see the top up here see how it's much cleaner than some of our existing tiers these have been out here um, this is probably I don't know two years and over time we get splash backsplash from our soil and um, we're spraying our towers with fertilizer and neem oil and sometimes you'll get buildup but what I did recently is just took a, a white eraser to them and check that out they just came together like new compared to what they were so at the end of summer I plan on cleaning all of mine up so they will look like new for the rest of the season so over here is our cranberry hibiscus it is getting really <laughs> massive and I didn't expect for it to get this big so quickly um, 
they will definitely start flowering soon and be putting off little seed pods and these guys will drop everywhere and it will be get a little crazy over here so over here is our save the monarch butterfly mix that we just sprinkled in this row and i've been very happy with this because of all the colors and we've seen tons of butterflies out here our kids love just chasing them and seeing them grabbing my phone and taking pictures of them there's all kinds of beautiful different types of flowers in this mix and I'll put the affiliate link below that you guys can click on and order if you're interested in these my daughter has also planted these same flowers in their own garden I'll show you those here in a little bit over here is our ancient kale plant this is a dinosaur kale which is our little tree over here my kale will uh, weather in the shade for um, so far we've been able to keep our kale plants for a couple years we've got a few zinnias over here in the middle and we have a little watermelon plant here i see a lot of flowers no watermelons yet i believe we planted this a little late i was kind of excited and impulse buy on the watermelon um, but we'll just see what happens we're kind of in a shadier area over here we have some uh, collard greens over here. Their leaves are just crazy big. These are uh, Georgia Southern collards. Look at these leaves. I mean, we have just so many. They're just beautiful, big, super easy to grow. They don't really take a whole lot of maintenance. Over here, we have some mammoth sunflowers that are drying. Usually what we do is after they start to tilt over like this, we just leave them on and let them dry out. Usually it takes about 30 days before we cut the head off and start taking the seeds out. Usually when this top turns a little bit yellow, we've already actually removed one of them um, and actually just did some seed bombing with them because for some reason those got a little rotten and bugs were all through them and drilling holes through it. Over here, I have uh, two plants that I pulled up from my compost. These are eggplants. I have no clue what variety they are because <laughs> I'm sure um, we've thrown many uh, eggplants into our compost. And anyways, the flowers are really pretty. Eggplants always grow well in the summer. Over here is our seminal pumpkin plants that are looking good. Now these are one of my biggest sellers of seeds, but I am out of stock for the first time in my seed collection and seeds for these. But check back after the fall. I'll actually show you my little pumpkin patch here in a little bit that we have in our food forest and vineyard out in the front. We have a sunflower that we have a deer that keeps hopping the fence and chomping, but anytime they chomp, a uh, plant it just kind of trims it back and now we'll have multi-head sunflower here this was a, a mammoth sunflower now over here is another plant we had a hornwort on and you can see the tops there where all the leaves are not off tops of our plants are and we were a little late getting this one but uh, this is everglades tomato that should weather good it looks pretty rough right now. I could cut it back, but I'm really not worried too much about it because we have volunteer Everglades plants everywhere around our chicken coop and our back barn garden. Um, and they actually seem to be growing better without my attention. I also um, sell those seeds as well. Over here we have some collard greens and kale here and again the sun is definitely getting to these we're in the middle of the day they're starting to wilt here's another sunflower that's actually quite ready almost to take out and dry those seeds we can feed them to our chickens save them um, we sell these seeds as well we have some of our zinnias we've saved seeds from over the years and some more over here this was actually my favorite color 
and I'm having trouble with these little black spots. Again, we've had a lot of rain that we're dealing with. We've got our African blue basil. These I propagated and added them into our garden. I'd like to put some more over here. They bring so many pollinators. There's so many bees in here. I don't know if you could hear them. I can hear them loud and clear. But it's so nice to have these pollinators right in the garden. Over here we have our cantaloupe plant. And as you can see, we have cantaloupes. Before we left on vacation, um, we had no cantaloupes. And we came back two weeks later and we've got all these awesome cantaloupes. So I'm super excited. I'm not sure yet. Uh, when it's time to harvest these cantaloupe. They're, they're still a little bit small here, but I need to definitely look that up if you guys have any tips for me on when to harvest or how to know when to harvest cantaloupes, because this is my first time. And my daughter is super excited. It's one of her favorite fruits. Over here, we have what's left of our bean plants that our deer keep eating. <laughs> It's okay because it's at the end of season. Anyways, look at my beautiful comfrey plant. This is actually a plant that it makes fertilizer for your trees in a garden. I actually made some liquid fertilizer. I shared it in my short videos if you wanna see how to make it. Um, you can also do a chop and drop method. I don't fertilize these. I don't do anything to them and they just keep growing and growing. Um, so those have been really nice got some random volunteer flowers here. Um, I do have a purple dahlia. They're kind of like a mini or one. One's starting to open up here, but I have all kinds of buds that are starting to open. Here's my other comfrey plant. Wow. It's definitely time to harvest. I need to put some of these in my food forest and I have tons of liquid fertilizer that, um, we recently made that I could share with friends and family. We have a bunch of blueberry bushes around our garden. It is not the time of year to harvest, so I won't bore you on showing you those. But what's really cool over here is my aloe plant starting to flower. Isn't that beautiful? So that's fun. I had a friend that gave me an aloe plant that you can actually ingest. I didn't know there was a difference. So if they have spots on them, that's not the type that you want to ingest. This is more for a cosmetics or a sunburn, but this one here, as it grows, will be able to make aloe water. So I'm super excited about that. Can't wait to make that. And when I do, I will share a short video of how I'm doing it. The same friend who gave this to me gave me some cactus and showed me how to make cactus water from it. And that's kind of a new favorite thing that we like doing, but I have too much of it and I've yet to plant it. I am propagating some of them here and I've been sharing with friends. I also wanted to show you a product that I've used the past few months and I absolutely love. If you haven't seen Farmer's Defense hats, they're super beautiful. This is the sunflower one that I picked out and they have these awesome sleeves that you can wear during gardening. If you saw my two videos before this, you saw that I got into some poison ivy and I do not garden now without these. Um, they also have gloves that match their sleeves. I do not have those yet, but I am excited to get some. This is their water resistant apron. That has been really nice. It's got a really strong pocket here for my uh, pruners. I can keep my garden tags in there and my pens and goggles and all kinds of things. It's just really nice. It's made really well, has a nice uh, clip on the back. So if you're looking for a gift or looking for something to be fashionable, but yet also uh, functional in the garden, this is a great item and you can save 10% with my code. I'll put that in the description below. So here is my kid's garden. And this is the seed mix from Save the Monarch Butterfly from True Leaf Market. 
and they've been really nice. So the kids are happy with it. They love just picking these flowers, bringing them into the house and making arrangements, taking them to our neighbors and our friends. I also have some butterfly weed over here. We've already had so much fun harvesting our caterpillars and watching them um, grow into butterflies. That was so fun. We did that for the first time recently. So um, at some point I'll definitely be able to show you some of that um, maybe in a short video or just a designated video of how we're doing that. We've got a little blanket flower in here, some random uh, beans back there. And of course, they're pineapple, which is doing really great. So over here is our front yard, food forest, vineyard, slash orchard. This is where we have some of our um, grapes. Some of them have done well, some of them not so much, but that's a whole nother video. But what I wanted to show you is our start of our pumpkin patch out here. This is where we grow our seminal pumpkins every year. I usually grow them beyond this, but this year we're going to be traveling a little bit more this summer. So I only did a few plants. I also have them planted in my garden, but they have done better with this oak tree here. So they're not getting so much sun blasted down this way. So they uh, hopefully will produce many pumpkins and I will give you an update every month on how these are doing. But I think I have covered everything in my garden. There's a little butterfly over there going to my zinnias. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My goal is to inspire you guys to get outside and grow a garden and just relax and, and enjoy yourself and the sunshine and get your family involved. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. If you guys have purchased any of my products through affiliate links, that directly supports me. So I appreciate all those sales. Um, recently, I've done really well with promoting these green stock gardens, which I absolutely love. I would not stand behind or promote something that I didn't use already in my garden and love and use. So thank you so much for that. And we will see you in the next video.